Hi, I'm Karen Stever, TGS Pro Technical Specialist with Ripon. In this short video today, I want to show you some of the less ordinary pests that we see in chrysanthemum fields and give you some chemical options to control them. Before I recommend any pesticides, I would like to caution that it's important to read and follow the entire pesticide label. And labels do change without notice, so even if you've used a product a number of times, you need to check the label. And lastly, and maybe most importantly in this case where we're talking about a specific culture of a specific crop, the products mentioned are going to be targeted towards mums out in the field. So products other than those may be safe and effective. Our first pest is leaf miner. And here you see the signs that a leaf miner has uh, visited your crop. This is a serpentine leaf miner. That's the typical leaf miner that people recognize on a wide variety of crops. We also see blotch leaf miner in chrysanthemum. It forms this large vacant portion of the leaf. Notice how the edges often remain and it has somewhat of a margin often as well. And here we see a whole plant with that effect. Leaf miners are the hatchlings of flies and moths and even a few beetles. These insects lay their eggs in the leaf tissue and the larva makes the mines that we see as a symptom on the outside of the leaf. On the left, we see a common serpentine um, leaf miner, and its larvae shown there at the bottom. It's a, a fly larvae. On the right is a moth species whose larvae form the leaf blotches. And at the bottom, we see an example of blotch leaf miner larvae in action. For control of leaf miners in mums, it's desirable to have a systemic or translaminar activity at the minimum and to have a good residual activity. So products that fulfill those criteria are listed here that are effective for leaf miners. We have both drench and spray options as you can see and product choice can be affected by how close the plants are to bloom or to sale in terms of pollinator safety. That would Potato leaf hopper is the most common species of leaf hopper on chrysanthemums. Down in the bottom corner, we see an adult and a nymph together. That is uh, a great picture. When you cast a shadow or ruffle a leaf, those nymphs may be on the top, but they'll pretty quickly scurry to the bottom of the leaf away from you. And the adults will fly hop, uh, really weak flyers. That's why they're called hoppers. Uh, to the next plant or so. For control of leaf hoppers, again, we like to have some systemic or at least translaminar activity to the chemicals that we're using and some residual because, as we know, mums aren't that easy to spray. Products are listed here. We have a couple of options for drenches for leaf hoppers in Safari and Mainspring. And the rest of the products are for spray options. When you're checking your mum fields and you're looking out across them, you might see some plants occasionally that have a dull colored foliage or stunted growth compared to the rest of the crop, or sometimes a single wilted stem or half of the, the plant wilted. And you might immediately think that this is a disease and treat for that, but I would encourage you to go check those plants carefully because in addition to disease, these symptoms can be mimicked by insect damage. The insects that would mimic damage like that are termites, shown here in all of the ways they can infest your plants. They dig through the root zone. They do feed on the roots a little bit, but the main damage comes from them burrowing into the stems. You see this quirky tissue here where they've done damage and uh, this is the point where a stem's broken off. 
Sometimes you may find loose leaves laying on the tops of the pots. And if you cut the stems, you may find their little track in the, in the center of your stem there, where they're crawling through it. So termites are a big problem for the plant health, obviously. For termite control in containers, we're going to resort to these old, older chemistries, uh, Duragard, which is chlorpyrifos, or a bifenthrin product shown on the right. Those are known to, both known to control termites, and if you're having this kind of damage, there's really no time to lose in getting control of those. The European pepper moth is the other pest that can cause this kind of damage in chrysanthemum crops. The moth is a fairly nondescript brown moth, um, shown up in the upper right corner. The larvae attacks the stems, digging into them, as shown here, hollowing out that stem, making it its home, uh, kicking out flasks. These pictures show us how this moth larvae spends part of its lifetime on top of the soil and part of it in the stem. They exude this webbing and this white uh, residue of debris that you see here, and that is can definitely help identify European pepper moths in your crop. For control of these moth larvae, we'll use products that will control caterpillars in general. Uh, products with a longer residual time, again, once again, for mums are desirable. You see those at the, on the top part of the chart. But the real residual pesticides, the softer chemistry shown at the bottom, can also be effective when you can catch those larvae outside of the stems. So that's a matter of timing and, and repeated sprays with these products. I want to thank you for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please contact me at the email or the phone number and extension shown below. We always also invite any ideas for future videos that you may like to see. Thanks for listening once again. Have a great day.